and welcome to Oaxaca in Lucia. And it's the day after. It is 12.46 on the 13th. And so we've gone out and last night, what happened? Why couldn't we record last night? Um, everywhere shut. There you go. So uh, there you go. Spain never closes? I don't think so. Yeah. But so, we did have whiskey in the hotel room, so that was good. But we did have five pints, five questions. So last night we had um, what, three pints. We did the three questions and then we went to a nice cocktail bar. What, what do we have, Gary? Uh, we had Long Island iced tea. Right. So it was question number four that we were going through. Um, what I want to ask about is actually living in Spain. For a lot of people, the dream is to come and live in a place like Spain. I mean, look how stunning it is here. It is genuinely incredible. The sounds, the sea sounds are beautiful. And when we come here, a lot of people are on holidays to places like Mojaca, mm. or it could be, uh, could be Bene, it could be Benidorm that way, or it could even um, be down in Malaga. That, you know, wherever it's going to be, Spain's always quite a desirable destination. Mm. So, so could you tell me, uh, number one, how did you get here? And mm. number two, um, what's it like to live here, the realities of it, and yeah. uh, work here as well? Yeah, so... Uh, Basically, my parents came out here first and uh, they wanted to, well, I think mainly my dad wanted to come to Spain because he used to be a truck driver and he used to do Spain quite a lot with the trucks. So he liked Spain. So I think my parents decided it would be nice to retire to Spain. And I just came out and visited them and I thought, actually, this is quite nice. And at the yeah. time I was, I was self-employed and uh, I just spoke to my customers and said, does it bother you if I'm not in Germany anymore? And they said, no. So I thought, All right, okay, so I can work from anywhere. And then I started thinking, yeah, it, it would probably back then it was a cheaper option as well. I think it was cheaper to live out here, but it isn't anymore, but it used to be. Um, so yeah, that was really my parents. I came to visit, I liked it. And I thought, yeah, why not? Um. So what's it like to the realities of living out here compared to, again, if you want to compare Germany, the UK yeah. and Spain, so what would you say, is it really like a holiday here every day sort of thing or, or is it not really like that sort of thing at all? Well, I suppose it depends. Uh, if, you, if you're retired, it can be a holiday, but, you know, obviously I'm still working, so not a lot has changed for me, really. I, just the surroundings are different, you know. I still spend most of my time in the office. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time outside on bikes doing fun stuff. So for me, it's not really like a holiday. It's just where I, where I am. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm fortunate really that I'm, I was able, able to learn the language fairly quickly. So I think it would be quite difficult if you don't speak the language. Well, I know it is quite difficult, particularly this part of Spain, you know, where it's not like super touristy, uh, people don't really speak English, so, you know, it's, it's definitely a big help uh, that I was able to learn Spanish fairly quickly. Um, so I feel quite at home here now, it's, you know, very, very easy. The same as Germany, I spoke German when I went to Germany, I thought I already spoke really good German, so it, it definitely helps to settle in if you speak the language. So the thing that, the biggest challenge is starting off with your language, what about the culture? I mean, what's the differences for you? The things that stick out to you, things that were easy. Yeah. Which things were difficult for you? Um, well, as we've already discovered, it's quite difficult to get your Amazon parcel delivered because <laughs> they turn up if they can be bothered, but half the time they can't be bothered coming. And quite often I get asked to go to the next vi village or the next town to the petrol station to collect my parcel because they don't want to come up to my village. And so that's a bit weird, um, but you know that, because we met a lady in the shop who was having that same issue mm. earlier on. Um, but in general, I like it. It's, um, I like the relaxed vibe, really. I mean, it's, it's a nightmare when you first come here, because, you know, nothing happens on time. It's like you're expecting things to happen at a certain time, and they don't. Um, but when you, when you learn to go with the flow, it's all right. I like, you know, it's never life and death. You don't need things immediately all the time. Okay. 
So, um, what things would you say, apart from things like your daily things, what about things like administration, or even like mm. get paying your bills? Is that part, uh, or you know, your daily milk things like you know, yeah. you're getting a pint of milk. Yeah. We, what, what's where you live, and what's the what's that like? Is that something that's quite easy, or is that something that's yeah, same, just like the same as home? Nip up to a corner shop or a supermarket, or um, well, we have got a little supermarket in the village, but um, you know, I, I just go to the larger one out of town, um, which is about a half hour drive, um, and then there's a big supermarket which has got everything, so yeah, that's not a problem. You know, obviously, you need transport. Um, if you haven't got transport, you have to shop in the village, which means you have to live with whatever selection of products they have in the village shop. But do you, do you miss things from home, like uh, being able to nip out and get a trifle, or going out and getting a bag of fish and chips, or you getting a kebab, or no, I mean, not really. Even like chocolate, do you, do you yeah. miss those sort of things? Or? No, because I mean, I didn't have any of that in Germany, and I was in Germany for 13 years, yeah. so I just got used to not having the stuff that I used to have. So you know, that's been the same here. I don't, I don't, I don't buy stuff in, in British supermarkets or anything. I just buy normal. Spanish fare. Yeah. Yeah. Then what about the cost of being here compared to being yeah. at home? I mean, even like now, we just paid about uh, 20 quid for two breakfasts. Mm. Um, I suppose if you consider us where we are, that's quite reasonable. And you're sitting on the big beachfront having uh, two giant English breakfasts for nine euros each. Yeah. And then so we had cups of teas and things in. Basically, you're looking about a tender a person, so even that 20 quid for a breakfast, mm. um, it's still quite expensive. You can go some places at home and pick things up for a five or a plate, but yeah. where we are, I mean, what about the cost of things here? Do you can find it? You said Spain has become quite expensive. Yeah. Uh, can you yeah. tell us about that? Yeah, well, since I've come here, everything has got a lot more expensive. And, and the things that, that are in Spain that are expensive, particularly the things like mobile phones, and uh, internet, uh, home internet, things like that, because there's a lack of competition. So you don't, they don't have much price pressure to do a cheap offer. So like, you know, my mobile phone contract, my internet contract that I used to have was way more than I would have had to have paid for the same in Germany or in the UK. So the stuff like that, uh, electricity has always been very expensive here. So, yeah. Okay, what about water and gas, is that similar? It's quite cheap, as um, Yeah, water I don't, I don't pay for. Um, I've got a meter, but the landlord covers the water, so I don't know. But yeah, I imagine that's not really super expensive. I think one of the biggest things is electricity, telephones, internet. Those, those are things that you can get a lot cheaper elsewhere. I'd say, um, shopping. You know, some shops are cheaper than others, so. If you, if you want to save money, you can shop in certain supermarkets and avoid others. But uh, yeah, in general, um, I wouldn't say Spain was now cheaper than Germany. Certainly as I remember Germany, I'd say they're on about the same level now. Okay. Right, uh, should we start making a little walk back? Yeah. And we can do some walking and talking. All right, let me get my little cap on. Stick <clears throat> pockets. <sighs> Uh, there you go. I can, ask, can see a bit of Mojaca. There you go. People playing the beach on the far end. Oh, it is quite a nice little beach. Isn't it? Look how you can see how clear the water is along. I definitely wouldn't mind living up there. I think that's, that'd be quite nice. Look the, look the house in the hills. Yeah. Lovely sea view. Yeah. Drop down here, you've got all the bars and restaurants. Nice one. It's a nice little breeze as well, isn't it? Yeah. You've got a bit of heat and you've got a nice cool breeze at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that was off radio shops, wasn't it? Yeah. Got to go to the one with the mobility scooters. Oh, the buses, so 
you are. You probably get. Huh. There you go. Plenty of buses here. Also, how come they they have, they've got these giant bins everywhere? I think why. No, like they got the big bins. Oh yeah. Mm. So they tend to do single collections. So you've got to go put your rubbish there. Yeah, and that's no. that's why Ruby followed me home from the bins because I had to walk to the nearest container, which was nowhere near my house. Mm. So I threw my rubbish away, and then she followed me home. Oh, that's nice in the shade. So now I've got the last question for you. Yeah. Um, Do I know somewhere where you can easily get a SIM card? Yeah, I think that... that the answer to that is no. Yeah, we, because of those 20 hours, at least two of them were spent trying to get a SIM card. But let's turn around and look at that. Look at that. It's such a nice place. It's, it's a genuinely nice place, I think. Uh, yeah, the, the final question is... Um, you've had this really interesting life. You've gone, um, again, coming from uh, council estates having all the child, all these things that happen when you're a child. So everyone goes through an experience and you've come, you know, you've had that fascinating time being in, living in Germany and the last uh, 13 years in now, 17? Yeah, 13 years in Germany and, and 17 in Spain. Yeah, 13 in Germany, 17. So you've spent quite a lot of your time in, uh, you know, outside and seeing, living in, really living in different cultures. It's not like uh, for a lot of us, as I said in the previous question, we're tourists, we come here for a week, maybe two. Um, we sit on sit at the beach, do the typical things, and then we sort of go off home. So it's interesting to see your take on life here. Um, but what about the future? Would you ever move? And if you're going to move? In 400 meters at the roundabout, take the second exit onto Al 5107. So if you're going to move somewhere in the future, can you move somewhere that gets SIM card easy? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. no, I'm all right. I've got a contract. I don't need these things. No, I, I pretty much envis envisage uh, staying here okay. until I die, probably, because I don't like moving anyway, and uh, I think this is probably quite a nice place to, uh, you know, end up, so, mm. you know, I don't really have any plans to go anywhere else. Exit the roundabout so, on what, what, Al 5107. Where, where did, why did you actually pick um, Almeria? out of the entire country as places to live. What made you actually pick Continue the places on that you picked? For well, one so you went to Germany. Where were you in Germany again? Uh, sort of near Cologne. Okay, near, near Cologne. And then you came and you came to Andalusia here again. Yeah. So what actually made you pick uh, these places to go and live? Um, well, Germany was where the work was, so I didn't really have a choice. And, um, yeah, coming here was basically as I said earlier, it was because my parents had come here, so it was their choice, really. Um, but when I came to visit, I just decided mm. that I enjoyed it. So, you know, it was a good place to be. Okay, so it, it wasn't any plan, like, oh, I'm going to go stay, I want to have a beach life or anything like this. It was no. just sort of all randomly done. Yeah, just because my mum and dad came out here and I came to visit. And then I started thinking it would be, you know, in probably... In 400 metres at the roundabout, take easy, the first Easier to have them. Uh, you know, you'd probably get more biking days. I did actually think that, because I remember when I lived in Germany, it rained a lot. Yeah. And I didn't get a lot of biking done. Um, so I definitely did think, oh, if I can wangle it, that my customers don't mind me moving out of Germany. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming here would probably be quite good for the motorcycling. But it was a bit of a moot point because at the time I had the bullet and that thing never worked anyway. So I had op opportunities, I had the weather for the motorcycling, I just didn't In have the motorcycle for the motorcycling. The take the first exit and stay on Al 5107. Yeah. yeah. And so how do you think you've actually changed with moving into these different places? Who, who do you think that you were, you know, imagine the being that you were starting off, you've had your time in Germany, so you're in, you're, you're at the end of your time in Germany, 
how do you think being in Germany um, changed your personality? What, how do you think it affected you? Uh, what did you take away from Germany? Uh, probably, um, yeah, probably discipline. A sense Is of, it discipline? A, a, sen <laughs> a sense of uh, right and wrong. Exit and the roundabout onto Al 5107. Try, trying to uh, comply with all the rules and In not upset people. At the roundabout, take the second exit onto so, Mayor. Well, pretty much the opposite of what you would ima imagine a, 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 a Spanish um, person would do. Um, you know, because obviously in Spain a lot of it is all about fiesta and uh, not really giving a toss about the law. They certainly don't give much of a toss. Um, but yeah, I'm still very German in that respect. I try and stick to the speed limits and do everything properly. So, so yeah, that's quite interesting. And what, how do you think that changed the way that you interact with people, for example? Or that the way that the kind of choices you were making? I don't know. I, I, people, people say to me that I'm very German. So it must be quite obvious. Right, so I think we've got to just go up navigate. I think we've got to go left here. So we turn that back on. There we go. In 150 metres at the roundabout, and take the third exit onto Carlos Terra. you Terra coming into Spain, how, how would you say, what do you think, what, what do you think uh, the actual move to Spain uh, did for you? How do you think that really changed or affected you? Or did it, even at all? Uh, yeah, probably not really. In 200 metres at the roundabout, continue straight to stay on what do you think that you like? Well, yeah, but I mean, as I say, people in Spain often think I'm... People in Spain often say I'm very German. So I think I changed a lot in Germany yeah. and became quite German. But I don't think I've changed at all since I've been in Spain. I've just carried on, really. I've not... Yeah, I don't think I've become any less German. Tree? With the UK, I mean, how is it, it's yeah. the place you started off from when you left. And, uh. um, how is the place, how do you perceive and understand or contextualise your home, the place you left? Um, um, let's start off with when you were in Germany, you left Germany. What was your perception or imagination of the UK? I mean, was it, did you still see it as your home or was it more your past? Or, um, was it just, yeah. just another place, or what was it? Ooh. Was it something like dead important? Yeah, I think by the time, by the time I left Germany, uh, the, you know, the UK was well in my past. Um, at the time, my parents were still there, so I did go and visit. Um, but yeah, I'd say by the end of my time in Germany. I had no uh, particular relationship to the UK other than for as long as my family was there, you know, visiting family sometimes, but um, once my parents came out here, um, I think I went back to the UK once, just on a holiday. Um, so, okay, so we'll I mean, you have to bear in mind, I've spent more years abroad than I've spent in the UK. I lived in the UK till I was 23, and then after that, you know, I've been in other places, so. Uh, have you, have you, have you travelled much to the UK? Have you done a, 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 the classic things at like the London John of Rhodes or your coast to coast? Or, um, no. Have you done any, any of those? No, because um, when I left the UK, um, you know, I was still very young. I was only 23, so I hadn't really done anything. Um, I just got out of university and just started working. Mm. So I haven't done any of the, the typical UK things, really. Mm. I think for a lot of people you're in quite a, a special, unique position. Quite a, a lot of people might be quite envious. Um, you're, you're single, you have your life, you've got some really nice bikes, you're living in a beautiful country in the world, you've got a gorgeous dog, you've got your, fa you've got your family nearby, you've got your parents, your mum nearby. Um, what, what do you want to do in the time that you, in the next couple of years? in the short, medium and long term, I mean, is there any places you want to really see or any bikes you really want to buy or are there any adventures or the, the places you want to go to? Mm. Um, Exit the roundabout onto A352. I want to 
definitely do some bike trips. Continue on A352 um, for five kilometers. Just wait for this woman to get out of the road. Um, yeah, I want to do some bike trips. Um, whether that means putting Ruby in into a kennels or leaving her with a granny, I don't know. Um, but yeah, definitely I want to do some trips on my bikes because that's what I actually got them for originally. But uh, yeah, the whole Ruby situation at the moment precludes me going away for any length of time. That's about it really, in terms of plans. Um, and yeah, in terms of bikes, I'm happy with the bikes that I've got now, so I think I'll just get, I probably will get a bike in for the channel at some point, so probably a third bike, just a bike that's of interest to a lot of people, but um, but, but your channel's got economical rides and you've told us that. Yeah. Um, you start off because you want an economical ride. Would you ever consider buying something that was a bit more pricey just for, just so you can tick that bike off your list? Would you yeah. ever get a, a, in an in uneconomical bike? No. Is that going to happen? Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've ruined myself, definitely, because I'm absolutely convinced that there's no need for it, spending money for something that I don't need. Um, so, no, unfortunately I can't envision me ever buying a nice bike, a dream bike, because I'd just be like, well, I can't justify the expense. It's just a toy. There's no, no reason why you need to spend that much money on something that spends half, half its life parked in the garage. Um, so, no, I like my motorbikes cheap and cheerful, definitely. Well, um I want to say thank you uh, for yesterday and today for spending those two days with you. Yeah, thank you. It's been uh, good. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I think we've had a lot of chats off camera. <laughs> and we've been doing this non stop for the past two days. But um, yeah, I want to say thanks again. Um, yeah. A lot of fun. Uh, this was uh, Queen Peaks Biker with Economical Rides um, and the five beer, five questions. I think we're about Googled in a quarter, didn't we? Yeah, we just about got them in, yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks again. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, take care, ride safe, and stay curious.